Okay, for everyone else, ladies and gentlemen, please make as much as you can with the final night of the season, the wonderful Sophie Willow! Hello! Hi, Ross! Oh, you are a lively bunch, aren't you? How are we? Woo! Woo! Do you know, I must say, I love to see people out enjoying themselves, I really do. Because, let's be honest, most of the time, life's actually very, very irritating, isn't it? It says, do you know, I'll tell you what's been really infuriating me recently. The amount of people that keep inviting me to the birthday parties of their babies. <laughs> you know, I've got to a point now, I'm very blunt, I just say, look, is the gin? Is the cocaine? Is it the kind of children's party I can lasso my knickers above my head and deep throat a kebab at the end of the night? Oh, it's not all right, oh, I'm afraid I won't be coming then. Do you know, I'll tell you what, one of my best friends um, had a baby boy on my birthday. I know, very selfish. Yeah. And I called her up recently, right, and I invited her to come out for my birthday, right? And she said that she couldn't come because she was too busy throwing him a surprise party. I said, he's one. <laughs> you don't have to throw him a party to surprise him. Just pop up from behind a tea towel. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I said, anyway, why is he having the big soiree? What's so special about him? What's he achieved with his sodding life? She said, oh, well, he's potty trained, you know. I said, so am I. She said, well, not always. I said, come on. I said, that was one time I was very drunk. Let it go. But, you know, I just, because I was, I'm just not a child-centric person. I'm really not. And I'm staying in Islington. Right? It's very posh, isn't it, Islington? I'm staying with a friend who's renting a cupboard for £500 a month, right? And it's, it's full of those sorts of child-centric parents, isn't it? They think that their children should be seen, heard, and annoying you in all the nice, quiet bars. I'll tell you what, you don't get any of that where I'm from in Bolton. The only time you'd ever see a child in a bar in Bolton is if they were looking for their parents. <laughs> Honestly. And the only time you ever expected to attend the birthday party of a baby is if you're a social worker. <laughs> Honest to God, it really is. But I'm quite rebellious. I don't do babies. I don't do weddings. I won't do them. Uh, I, I don't do jobs, actually, to be quite honest with you. That's why I'm here doing this, you know. Uh, the last job I had, I actually got sacked for throwing a satsuma at the chef's head. Uh, he got fruity with me, I got fruity that way. <laughs> that was a very cheap joke, I know, yes. But true, that did actually happen, it really did. Uh, but I've always been quite rebellious. Uh, for the first, uh, se well, secondary school, I was actually excluded for arriving drunk in a bikini. Um, but to be fair, it was a very hot day in Bolton, and they only come once a decade, so you've really got to make the most of that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I'm like this for a few reasons, really. I think, firstly, I come from a long line of eccentric female Boltonians. Uh, one in six of us believe we've been abducted by aliens. One in three of us believe we are an alien. Yeah. And these are the same ones. The only way to describe the rest, take a break, it's less of a magazine and more of a family album. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, I'm always picking up, going, oh my God, it's Auntie Gail on page five, eh, grand, look. She's back on the ward. Seems I'm not the only one she likes to chase down the road with a cricket bat. Go on, Gail. Yeah. But you know, I definitely think that madness makes you more interesting. I really do. I had an Auntie Joan who was an absolute boa until she got manic depression and started knitting clothes for the hamster. It was really much. Yeah, it really gave her an edge, it did. It did. But I'll tell you what, I look after my mental health, I really do. I, I, I'm very good, I take star flower. Does anybody here take star flower? No, all right, okay, we're all very well in this audience then, clearly. It's a, it's a herbal supplement, it's very good, it just balances out the hormones. If you're the kind of person who wakes up randomly on a Monday and thinks, oh, I'd quite like to kill myself today and sort of stab the next person I see. Star flowers for you, it really takes the edge It does, it's very, very good. Yeah, but there is a lot of madness in my family. Get-togethers are an absolute nightmare. Like, funerals would bring an extra coffin, just in case. Yeah. Uh, it's a really... I, I, Christmas, we can't do it. We can't do Christmas. Uh, my grandmother's the worst at Christmas, actually. She gets very maudling, right? She comes out with these sort of dramatic, sweeping statements that would sound fantastic on Warren Bacall in some tragic film noir. But on Gran from Bolton, they just sound fucking ridiculous, right? So I called her up last Christmas. I just imagine, I invited her to a party, right? I just imagine the camera zooms into her tearful eyes and she says, no, no, Sophie. I don't want to come to a Christmas party and stand in the corner like a leftover piece of turkey. <laughs> and even if I did want to go, I couldn't possibly. I've just defrosted a loaf. <laughs> and a 
need to eat him. And she slung the third down on them. Honest to God, I'll tell you what, I knew exactly what to get her for Christmas. I got her a year-long supply of star flower. She's been fine since. Really I actually lived with my grandmother for a bit. Uh, she just got divorced and chucked out the iron. She was having quite the renaissance. The first thing she said to me when I arrived was, Sophie, don't waste your life ironing a man's clothes. His creases will drop out, but your wrinkles won't. I was eight. I know. I know. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I think another reason I'm quite, she's fabulous, my grandma. She used to work for Anne Summers. Uh, so the garage was always full of sex toys. I remember once I opened up a box of Kieran Cox with faces on, right? And I, yeah, and I gave that to my friends at school because I thought they were Beaker from the Muppets. <laughs> no? Very awkward conversation with the social worker. It really, really was. Uh, but you know, I have to say, another reason I'm quite a rebellious person, right? For the first seven years of my life, I didn't even go to school, right? I spent most of my time riding the back of an Alsatian in an orange shell suit with no shoes on. Think Mowgli with a mullet, right? And this is because my mother's actually a heroin addict, right? Okay, so parenting was never top of the agenda for Mother Bear. Bless her cotton, she tried her best, but it really wasn't her skill set. I once cut my head open, she took me to Morrison's, do you know what I mean? Just didn't get it. But you know, I'd like to take a minute now to celebrate some of the attributes of drug addicts because there are a lot and they get overlooked, right? I'll tell you two. First up, they're very creative people. I have never met a drug addict who's not a creative person, right? But I'll tell you now, it comes at a cost when they go to rehab. My mother now likes to send me paintings to express her love slash psychosis. Uh, the last one she sent me was of a giant terrified eye sitting in a goldfish bowl. I'll be quite honest, it felt more of a threat than a gift. <laughs> but certainly a thought-provoking piece, it really was. <laughs> It's on my fireplace, <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> Another thing, they're very determined people. There's a myth that drug addicts are lazy, they are not. I once saw my mother ride a child's bicycle for six miles just so she could sell it at the end and buy some crap cocaine. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is commitment to the cause, is it not, ladies and gentlemen? Is it not? Yes? It bloody, well, I can tell there's Manchester. Yeah, it fucking is! Yeah, well, thank you very much. Uh, you've been fabulous. I've been Sophie Will, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.